y'all. Hey, y'all. It's Marina. So, I've tried filming or recording. Oh, I'm not going to go back. We're not going back. It's No. I've tried recording this intro 700 times, and it's either A, turned out super awkward, B, it's just ridiculous, or C, it didn't make no sense. So, hey, if you're new here, what's up? My name is Marina, and we're just going with it. I don't care if somebody farts in the background. I'm keeping it in here. Um, and I'm the only one in the room, so somebody's me. But, okay, let's, so y'all asked for a New Year's resolution video. I thought I'd give y'all a laundry video because, honestly, getting ahead of my laundry is on my New Year's resolution list. So we're going to go through and do a bunch of laundry. I hadn't done it in weeks, so it's a mess. Um, and then we're going to talk about some resolutions I have. Okay, let's go. y'all what video you wanted and you guys said a new year's resolution video well my new year's resolution is to get my laundry done so, <laughs> so i figured while i did my laundry i would talk a little bit about my new year's resolutions and what i plan to do for 2021 you know for 2020 my new year's resolution resolution was 2020 vision and that didn't happen <laughs> everybody was saying 2020 vision 2020 vision for 2020 and i'm like uh, I can't hop on that bandwagon because I have like 1020. I don't know if that's how it said. Like where I'm blind in this aisle. Like I don't know if that's 1020 or 020. Do I have 020? I don't know. I figured I'd hop on the bandwagon because I usually don't set New Year's resolutions. Because honestly my mind is so... Having ADHD is no joke. Like I'm... One minute I have all the motivation, and this is not just ADHD, this is moms in general. <laughs> um, this is anybody in general. But your mind gets so set on doing something, and then you're so motivated. Like I wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, I'm gonna get all the things done. Or not even in the morning, because let's be honest, I'm not a morning person. So I go to bed at night thinking, tomorrow's gonna be the day I get all the things done. And then you're on day 20 of saying that the prior day and you have no clean clothes because you haven't done laundry since Thanksgiving, right? I mean, we got a lot of clothes. I haven't done laundry. I might have done one or two loads here and there since Thanksgiving, but honestly, it's been a while. It's been a hot minute. I noticed we needed laundry whenever my daughter went out in camo shorts and a long sleeve shirt yesterday. <laughs> I was like, hmm. It's time. It's time to it's time to do some laundry. So we're gonna see how many loads I can get to today. I don't know though. And I'm wearing Shane socks. Can y'all see my feet? I'm wearing his socks. Does anyone else notice my track of mind derail constantly? Like, why did I just mention I was wearing Shane socks? New Year's resolutions. I hope y'all had a merry Christmas. I forgot. See, I just did it again. 
what does Christmas have to do with New Year's? One of my New Year's resolutions is to get healthy. And that's not to lose weight. It's not, that's not my New Year's resolution. Would I like to lose weight? Like, sure. I mean, let's be honest here. Being overweight, like, I have been plus size my whole life. And plus, this plus size community has this thing where they're open to body sizes until you want to change. And, and they're all for you until you want to lose weight. And then it's like, why do you want to lose weight for it? Like, because I can't get out of bed without every limb on my body hurt. And not because I'm 60, but because I'm fat. I can't go outside and chase my kids. They, they want to play tag and I can't even jog six steps and I'm out of breath. My main goal for 2021 is to be more present in my kids' lives. Not that I'm already not present in my kids' lives, but I want to be more actively present in their lives. And that requires a change in me. That requires a change in my body. So, while I don't care about getting skinny, and while I don't care about how I necessarily look on the, what is this? <laughs> on the outside, I do care how my actions, how my issue with eating, how my body, my metabolism affects my kids. It ain't a problem until it starts messing with my kids and what my kids want me to do and what my kids need me to do, how my kids want to interact with me, then it's a problem. And I've noticed this year that it is a problem. They want to do so much with me that I physically cannot do. And when I, and when I try to do it and I can't do it, it irritates me and it messes up the whole mood. I'm done with that. Like I said, it's not realistic. It's really not realistic. And it may sound like an excuse, but it's really not realistic for me to like work out even 30 minutes a day. I, I don't have any time. Any extra time that I have, which is very little, I put into this YouTube channel. I put into my relationship with you guys and you guys and my relationship with you, not just my YouTube channel, not just my videos or anything like that, not uh, this career thing that everybody's chasing on here, but my friendship with you guys my relationship with you guys on the other side of that camera is not something i'm willing to sacrifice i have grown too fond of you guys and i have built such a relationship with you guys you guys are not you guys are not um disposable for me mm -mm. not now i'm too invested y'all are stuck with me i've done the whole key y'all see how well i fold <laughs> I've done the whole keto thing. I've done the whole low carb thing. I've done all kinds of things. I think I'm honestly, a bunch of people have recommended um, I track bites. It's kind of like the Weight Watchers app. I may do that. Um, I may do my fitness pal. I may, I really do want to go ahead and download the Weight Watchers app. I know you guys said it's pretty useless without going to the meetings, but we only have one car for our family. I'm literally a hermit, y'all. I do not leave my house ever. Um, I had an issue where like I was okay with leaving my house with me and the four kids and then we had an issue where um, my kids were almost abducted so I don't do that anymore. I wait until Shane's with me and I can go out alone or he can go out with... Okay, we're just playing with this. I don't know what, I don't know what my hands are doing. Um, but my head's trying to have a conversation, so can we please stop? <laughs> I, so I wait till he gets home and I can go alone, or we go together. Um, because four eyes are better than two eyes. Well, one eye. <laughs> Another resolution I have is time management. So this is how I do my video. So normally when it's not Vlogmas and I'm not killing myself, and I'm not living off two hours of sleep, I will film on the weekend and then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll post and it'll be at seven o'clock. So I'm looking to get more into time management, meaning Saturdays, I need to film instead of just sitting there until seven o'clock and either being like, well, now I gotta film it at night and, and not go to sleep, or now I can just film Monday after I get done homeschooling. And then I'm trying to film between homeschooling and, and trying to get dinner ready and trying to get the kids bathed and, try, and it's, it's a mess. So I want to get better at time management. I think that'll help some of the anxiety that tries to creep up on me too. Um, I used to be a very anxious person uh, before my whole 
trans Jesus transformation, I used to be a very anxious person. Like, I would go in the store, and I would have a buggy full, and I would just hyperventilate and have to leave the store with my whole buggy full. I feel so sorry for the employees that had to put all that back. But that's what it used to look like for me. It don't look like that so much anymore. There are some times that, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable and I get kind of antsy and stuff in crowds, but nothing like it used to be. So I want to manage, how did we get on that from time management? My gosh. So I want to be able to manage my time better, not only for my sake, but once again, when it starts interfering with my kids, <clears throat> when it starts interfering with my kids, it's a problem. And I'd also like to, so we followed Dave Ramsey for the longest time. And it was such a blessing. In 2021, I want to get back to doing that. <clears throat> Granted, we've done the snowball effect once. And why do I lose my voice every time I talk to y'all? I'm going to just start sitting here and then having captions. And y'all can just read it. And I'll just sit here and look at you guys like this. <laughs> we used to follow Dave Ramsey. It did wonders. Like, it was... The best decision I made, I've probably made as an adult, honestly, like regarding money and stuff, because we don't, we don't do debt. We don't have a lot of debt, but I have made purchases here recently that required a credit card and we went from zero debt, only our house being in debt to now we have a credit card and I don't like that. I don't like owing anybody money. So, I want to get all that debt, I want to do the snowball effect, knock out all that debt, and not do it again. Even though I don't regret the purchases I made with it, like I needed it, but still. 2021, I also want to eat out less, and that has nothing to do with weight loss. That has everything to do with money. I realized while doing, while balancing our budget book, that we eat out entirely too much. We eat out almost always on Fridays, usually on Saturdays. And sometimes on Sundays and that it's just too much for our family when we go to McDonald's we might as well like I could go eat at a, the, the most high-end steakhouse with the little golden flakes and the drinks like and stuff I could eat out there for what it takes us to buy for all of us at McDonald's it's easily $45 I want to eat out less I don't want to blow money also I mean let's be real though it's foods expensive in general even if I'm buying like food at Walmart it's stupid ridiculous I mean like I don't like that word stupid that's such an ugly word even if you're talking about like let's not use that word anymore so not stupid ridiculous it it's expensive ridiculous it's just it's a lot we we have a budget of two hundred and twenty five dollars a week for groceries for a family of six that's a little excessive I used to now when we were poor poor I used to go to Priceless. It's like this little Save-A-Lot store. I used to go there and spend $100 a week on a family of six. Granted, we ate a lot of hot dogs, we ate a lot of sandwiches, um, and we ate a lot of spaghetti. <laughs> but I used to do that. Since Shane's income has increased substantially, I usually go to Walmart Pickup because it's easier. It's, it's just easier. I go to Walmart Pickup and I usually spend about $250 to $300 a week. My budget is $225. So in 2021, I'd like to also stay under my grocery budget. I don't even want to hit my grocery budget. And you guys can hold me accountable for that. If you see a grocery haul from this moment on, that is broke. What? Did I do that just now? If you guys see a grocery haul from this moment on that is more than $225, you better chew me out in the comments. Not in a mean way, but be like, Marie, now Marina, now Marina, you know better. You just spent, you just went over your grocery budget. That's part of your New Year's resolution. And because I love you guys, I'll listen to y'all and I'll be like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> So, get in check with my health, learn time management, work on, like, spending, okay, I was like, wait a minute, etch out the debt, what little debt we have, and then I'd really love to spend more time reading my Bible. I don't know if you guys know this, I went to school for theology anyway, um, so I'm very well learned 
on scripture and on the Bible, but you can't replace the quality of time spent with God while reading the Bible with knowledge. Just because I've read something before and I know it, know what it's talking about, I know the context it, it says it in, that doesn't mean I never go back and read that again because there's something God could want to say to me in that passage, in that scripture. You know, when God's in it, when the Spirit is in it and reading the Bible, you can read the same sentence five times and get five different things out of it. So I want to make it a habit to read my Bible every single day, not just the scripture before bed. Every single day I wanna make time. Like I said, I don't have a lot of extra time. So doing something like reading the Bible, I can listen to it while I'm washing dishes, while I'm doing laundry or anything like that. I also like to incorporate, incorporate, is that the right word? More faith content, but not necessarily, okay. So I spoke a little bit about me being an evangelist and my get ready with me. And like in this video, I derailed a lot and didn't ever get to what I was wanting to say. The point I was trying to say is I am an evangelist. I am a licensed, but the reason I don't come across and say, oh, hey, I'm a preacher, or I don't get behind a pulpit anymore and like beat you down with the Bible or anything like that. It's because I want to show people that being a preacher does not, being a preacher doesn't mean that you have a free ride. It doesn't mean you have a, a gold pass. You are a normal person just like anybody else. And any preacher that tells you any differently is a liar and I'm sorry. But any preacher that tells you they don't struggle with things, any preacher that makes it seem as though they are too perfect, that they don't need any that they are never in need for repentance or that they're never in need of saying sorry or God forgive me or anything like that, asking for forgiveness or anything like that, it is not so. There is no man on earth that is perfect. I wanted to show people that just because I'm in ministry does not mean I'm required to be any bit of more perfect than you're required to be perfect. Here's that Pentecostal preacher. I feel her coming to the surface. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, and if you require me to be anything more than what I physically can do, anything more than a soul in need of saving, you are wrong. If that were so, preachers would be exempt from the grace of God because they wouldn't need it. When we do, in fact, need it, <laughs> and we are not exempt from it, hallelujah, praise Jesus. I want it to be like it is now, where I'm just here and there talking about it, and I'm just here and there speaking on it because I want to show you guys it is absolutely possible to lead a normal life and be a Jesus follower. It is absolutely possible to love Jesus with all your heart and like other things too. It's okay to have other hobbies than just reading the Bible. I feel like as a whole people look at pastors and preachers and they're like, you have a hobby? What? You like to go fishing? What? And it's like, what are we? I'm just like you. I think it's funny because people think you have to be a priest and like no communication with the outside world, no personal relationships, no nothing like that. As long as like murder isn't your hobby, you're good. <laughs> I promise you're good. As long as it's not something that obviously would affect you morally, like <laughs> you can go fishing. Like you can go fishing, man. Like if that's your thing, if you like doing that, go fishing. You're a normal person, and I can't expect anything of you that I don't expect of myself, that God doesn't expect of me.
long time Can't you see I wanted it to be us now Darling, if you knew how this would turn out We let the stars shine bright Yeah, I've been waiting too long for ya I don't wanna love ya if you don't love me back Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. But real quick, going back to what I was talking about, about the preacher thing. My main thing is we have held people like that up to such a high standards to where now they feel like they have to live or, or make their life be like perceived to be this perfect, no sin, no nothing. And they in fact do sin by lying, by making it look like and seem as if they don't struggle, which makes them unrelatable to the people in the congregation, which then makes living for God and following Jesus such an unobtainable standard that they don't want nothing to do with it. Church was never meant to confine your walk with God. And that is my main thing. That's why I have backed off from that traditionalism so much is because Whenever you confine yourself to a church, you confine the love of God. You confine God himself. And he should never be confined to a building. Are you kidding me? He's humongous. Jesus did not confine himself to a building. The thing about it is, and it comes down to this, and I probably have started so many arguments by saying this within my community and with my church, but Jesus never secluded himself to a building. He sat with the tax collectors. He sat with the sinners. He was a kid teaching in the synagogues, but his ministry led him to leave the building. He didn't limit himself to the building. Most of his ministry was done outside of a building. And the people who had the biggest problem with that was the religious people, was the Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't like it because they ran their synagogues a particular way. And here comes Jesus saying, hey, go out to them. He told Peter, he said, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Well, you can't do much fishing in a pond. And whenever you bound yourself in a church, that's a pond. But the whole ocean, the whole sea is out there if you just go. And I know a lot of you are like, Marina, well, why don't why do you have such a problem being called a preacher? It's not that I have a problem being called a preacher. I just don't like the vision um, that comes along with it. Whenever people call me preacher, it sets me apart, not in reality, but in their mind as me being this unobtainable standard. And that causes a lot of people to not want anything to do with me. When in fact it's totally different, oh my gosh. And that's why I try to be so relatable and so genuine and so real on here and in real life. Because if I can get them to believe that, hey, I'm just like you, then they see me in a new light. And that's what I've learned, that's what I've been doing. Well, I've been meeting people out in public and then they just start a conversation about Jesus and I make friends with them and then I tell them I'm a preacher and they're like, wait, what? And I see their eyes get real big and I see them kind of flinching and kind of like move backwards. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. It's not like that though. And I've been seeing so many people come to the realization of Jesus through doing that alone and it's worth every bit of it. And there's been so much fruit come out of that because the drug dealer can't relate to the preacher behind the pulpit. The drug dealer needs to relate to the woman who has an addiction to food. And that woman is still me. 
yet I still can follow Jesus because we're all messed up and we're all in our own walks and nobody's perfect. That's why I leave it a little while. That's why I don't say nothing about preaching to nobody. And it almost always comes up anyway. And it almost always comes from their side because they notice something's different about this girl. She don't think like others think. She don't judge me. And then it just opens the conversation to, hey, thou shalt not judge and get the beam out of your own eye before you start judging somebody else's beam. All right, guys, six loads washed, dried, and folded, and actually load seven in the dryer and load eight in the washer. I think that's pretty good, in my opinion. By the way, if I sound groggy, it's because I just woke up to do this because I forgot I didn't do it. But I turned it into this, which is not bad. It still needs to be cleaned. <laughs> but all the clothes are out of the way. All the hangers are out of the way. So I'm happy with it. I'll get to clean it today because I'm doing a massive clean with me today. But I hope you'll have a blessed morning, evening, night, whatever it is, wherever you're at, and Thank you guys for always hanging out with me. I love you.